This week on the show, photographer Eric Squaringen of The Art of Eric James. I'm model Roxanne Kelly. And I'm photographer Brian Fisher. And this is Twip Glam. Welcome back to Twip Glam, this week in photography's Glamour podcast. So this week we have Eric James, a great photographer from California. We don't even have to uh, go uh, out of our time zone. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> We're at a normal hour today. <laughs> How are you doing, Eric? I'm doing pretty good. What brings you into the world of photography? Sure. Um, God, I was I was um, really young, um, like seven or eight years old, and my neighbors um, would have me house sit when they'd go on vacation, um, and you know I'd feed their cats and get their mail and stuff, uh, and they had this one weird room that had. Um, it's kind of like Frankenstein's lab, and I needed to know what that was all about. So, and they said, "This is our dark room, and um, come on over and check it out." And when they put, you know, shine some light on some paper and put it into water, and an image started floating out, it was pretty much magic. So, I had to know everything I could about that. That's really neat to start in a dark room. That's how oh, I yeah. got my start. I. Uh... <clears throat> I wandered into the bathroom one day and my brother had darked out the windows and there was yeah. this machine. I'm like, what in the heck is this? And he's like, yeah. watch this. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It was- Especially at a young, impressionable age and you just go, wow, this is magic. Yeah, I think I was about 10 and it was down the rabbit hole. There, yep. no, no money left over after the allowance for years <laughs> and years. Uh. So... I. Uh, you, you're in the Bakersfield area, which is yeah. lucky because you've got a pretty good selection of models. Mm-hmm. And I, uh, been, I've looked at your work for years. I know you and Roxanne um, have thought about working together in the past. Yeah. Um, we did a group shoot together. Oh, that's what you yeah. went to one of the portfolio you jam. Went to yeah, one of my exactly. portfolio jam events. Yeah, mm-hmm. I I can't be blamed for not remembering because we get about two hundred <laughs> people on a busy year. I can't imagine how um, you couldn't remember every single one of them. Yeah, oh, it's it's. I'm just getting old. <laughs> so, uh, speaking of uh, the portfolio gems, you're going to come up a few times over the next few episodes because of the guests we're doing. Um, that is my event business where I bring out photographers and models and we have a giant group shoot. Uh, those are going to be morphed next year into Twip Glam events. So if oh, you nice. are uh, in California or just like to travel, we will be setting up a number of uh, relatively budget sensitive photo shoots where you can come out, shoot some models, get some light instruction, um, primarily, the uh, the events are going to be based around it, getting experience, talking with your friends. Uh, it's not like a full blown workshop where we're going to follow a syllabus, but yeah, we're going to get together, and you guys can come and enjoy. I always have a lot of fun at them. I've been to three out of the four that I've been modeling for. Yeah, I've been doing them for. 15 years yeah. or so. <laughs> well, and I, I only just came on scene not that long ago. <laughs> because we were getting ready for this podcast, we didn't run one this year, and I've been hammered with emails. Why haven't you uh, announced the new one? I'm yeah, like, well, when's I'm the next date? I'm busy. <laughs> <laughs> what, building this whole thing? Yeah, yeah. just kind of creating the whole situation. <sighs> so um, for, our, uh, for our viewers, this podcast is going to have some nudity in it. If you are subscribed oh, no. via, it's true. Oh no! I know. <laughs> uh, if you're subscribed via iTunes or YouTube, you're going to get some blocks over the nudity so that we don't uh, violate the terms of service because that's bad. You get kicked off. Uh, if you want to see the complete feed, zip on over to This Week in Photo and watch the podcast on the website, or subscribe from there, and you will get the works. On to pictures. Yay. Our first picture yeah. is ah. quite interesting. Stunning. Really odd, though. How do you explain <laughs> to your, your hairstylist, okay, think cat and electricity. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, actually, it was the other way around. My hairstylist, uh, uh, I work with very closely, um, Atomic Kitten Salon produced uh, a series 
of um, model, you know, creations, and then I get to photograph them. Oh. Well, and Atomic Kitten is that don't they do the uh, the big uh, contests? They do pinup contests. They do First Friday events. They do. We just got back from Las Vegas where we did the National Battle of the Salons. Uh, a few years back, they took second place in the nation. And we ended up in Berlin. Um, wow. Yeah. Uh, pretty happening group. Yeah, I think, and, and unfortunately, a lot of salons don't realize that there's this competitive culture. And I think it really does take it to the next level. Oh, absolutely. It's stressful, but it's it it pulls out a creative element that um, it's, yeah, it's unique. I am loving this picture. Uh, makeup artist also regularly involved? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Makeup, hair, uh, wardrobe. Um, we all work together and create um, stuff like this. It's yeah. very unique. I, I'm... When I when I look at the picture, you know, a lot of times, especially in the glamour world, we do this very uh, square on picture. You know, the cropping is equal and you've done a fun thing where you've pulled the gaze off to the side a little bit and then it's accentuated with a line down the nose mm -hmm. and it has a very different emotional impact. If that were if her gaze were into the lens like a typical uh, glamour shot would be it would be a completely different picture. Mm -hmm. I love the black eyes, the lips, and then brought in by the neckline and the, the uh, gauge earrings. Very unique. Yeah, gauge earrings can be kind of difficult to work with because they, if they're not done right, they go very wrong. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, you know, if you're not careful, your viewer will simply stare at their ears. And very rarely are the ears the location you want to draw people's attention to. Agreed. I yeah, <clears throat> but this is nicely handled. They're not so big that you're seeing through to the other side. Mm -hmm. um, although an entire photo shoot where you were trying to get somebody to look at people's ears would be fun. It would be. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what audience we would be going towards. I think yes, Aren't just there, other photographers. You know, <laughs> there got it. There's got to be a a group for that though. Oh, I'm sure. Well, I mean, there's a group for everything. <laughs> That's true. Everything. Oh, oh God, everything yes. that I've heard of, except for ears so far. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it's a great picture. The uh, One of the things that, uh, after staring at it for a little bit, I see the arrow down her neck and chest. Mm -hmm. And it does a really nice job of making that a negative space. It brings the face out mm -hmm. uh, sure. more than just a straight up, you know, it's a deep shadow. Is it makeup or is it uh, uh, just Body shadow? paint. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. body paint. It's, it's body paint. In first look, it it just looks like it's a deep shadow, but then yeah, you look at where does. the lights are coming from, you're like, that, that, that doesn't make be sense. That dark. Yeah, <laughs> which which again, it brings emotional impact. It brings her face forward like you were very carefully lighting when you didn't have to. Mm -hmm. um, I think necks, there's the potential for for makeup on the neck that we rarely see taken advantage of. It's true. Um, there are many cases where, especially in black and white, where you can get away with not matching skin tones. Mm -hmm. Um, I have had a makeup artist slightly darken the neck, and it does pretty amazing things. Hmm. Oh, yeah, contours. <clears throat> yeah. For sure. It's a great picture. Oh, thanks. I recognize <laughs> this child, and I can't place <laughs> where from. This is uh, actually um, Ramona and I's granddaughter. Oh, oh okay. And uh, her name's Athena. It's and, pretty creepy. Ooh, I love that name. Yeah, it's it. Well, it was meant to be kind of creepy, you know. Yeah. I, I like occasionally. Um, I'm you know I go that direction, kind of dark and odd. Um, and this is all done with light painting. Oh. And oh. the way the image actually came about was they were going to throw away a bunch of stuffed animals. They were getting rid of them, and it was like, oh, wait a minute, I got an idea. <laughs> yeah. It is. It's got this sort of corpse bride look to it. Yeah, it does. It. Yeah. Uh huh. And, what is she wearing? Um, She's wearing a, just a long it's, dress. It's an old wedding dress that we actually dug out of a trash can, uh, oh, dumpster dive. Yeah, it was like, oh, this is cool, you know. And we've used that same prop over and over again. Mm -hmm. It that the whole thing, the tonal quality, where it's not really a black and white, but it kind yeah. of is. <laughs> yep. Yeah. 
pulled the chroma down a little bit. Yeah, and... it really speaks to sort of Edward Scissorhands, yeah. Corpse Bride, Jack Skellington kind of a look. The ones that you left in color, like the Care Bear and the My Little Pony. Yeah, I like that. It's like, oh, I know those. <laughs> Wait. Oh, that's even creepier. <laughs> That's that's where all of your toys went. Oh no. They went to live with a little girl in a bride's vest. <laughs> it is it is creepy and fabulous. Um it reminds me of an image that we uh and I'm going to put the uh, It reminds me of an image that we had on a previous show for with uh Pascal Hemleisher with the coal on the ground. Mm. This image right here, as we will add in post-production. You have such a good memory. Oh, well, I spend a lot of time looking at the pictures. I know, bet. Editing, <laughs> editing the podcast. <laughs> uh, and we're, and, and we're going to try to get Pascal Hemleisher back on our podcast because he's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, that sort of busy ground, it, 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 I feel like it sort of, keeps your brain active where you're you're looking and searching and yet because she is basically black and white and very pale your eye moves away from the subject matter and then gets drawn back in it's a mm. very active visual experience cool and uh I think good. it is so because it looks like a doll's face almost. It so does. It kind of blends yes. in. You could do you could practice this with a creepy doll just Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's a good image. Definitely a um, great one. So what did you light paint with? Uh, I've, I build like a, a whole bunch of different tools. Um, mainly uh, an LED flashlight that's been modified with a, um, a channeled grid and some like Roscoe 111 diffusion material. Um, Does and light, light diffusion. Yeah, light diffusion, LED. Um, and then... You know, over time, you kind of get a feel for how long to leave it in certain areas and, and what direction you want it to come from. That's the thing I really like about light painting is you can make the light pliable. You can make it do whatever you want it to do. It's pretty cool. I I've like never experimented it. with it. That's interesting. We can arrange Oh, it's, maybe yeah, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> it, 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 maybe we should drive to Bakersfield, find an uh, expert. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Your... It's an interesting process. I mean, you basically have to hold still for a very long time, maybe two, three minutes during the exposure. Uh, the room's totally dark. The camera's locked down on a tripod. The shutter's open for the entire time. And then I basically walk through the image and put the light where I want it. And um, depending on how long you leave it in a certain place, the exposure builds. And um, yeah, you can create all kinds of really cool textures and it's one of my favorite techniques. I use it a lot. Some of the new mirrorless cameras are pretty slick in that as you expose a long exposure image, you can watch it build. Oh, really? The back of the camera. Wow. And I've thought for things like light painting, the ability maybe to put that on a big monitor. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. then just be able to paint it. It's cheating, but Still. photography is all about finding who's got the best cheat. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Because taking a picture what, what is, is cheating. <laughs> taking a picture, as much as everybody tries to find purity in it, it is just cheating memory. There <laughs> you mean, go. It, it is its own cheat. Yes, it is. Uh, uh, oh, very fun. I, this seems strangely familiar. Well, the yeah. plane is yeah, awesome. That's got to be the, one of the shoots. Huh? It, the plane uh, belongs to a common friend of ours, Todd Schultz, yes. who is an Todd. amazing photographer in his own right. Mm -hmm. Yes. And he's on the short list. We'll, we'll have Todd <laughs> along before. And I bet we'll see the plane again. <laughs> oh, yeah, no doubt. It is. Yeah, we a, shot this last week. It is I mean, a this beautiful is, this is a new one. plane. The, wait, that image is new. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we shot that like fun. Just, just last week. I love it. Her shoes are awesome. I, I love the angles. I, you know, you look at the struts on the airplane, they create the, a very strong V that brings you into the airplane, and then you balance mm -hmm. that with her entire body as a large triangle aiming to her right. face. Mm -hmm. And so they, they compete a little for your attention. They bring some power and dynamic to the image. Um, 
It's co- really cool to see her shadow go both ways also. Oh, yeah. I hadn't even really so looked at that. So the light's coming from behind the plane and in front of the plane, like from to the right, camera yeah. right. Um, I find it to be really entertaining. Yeah. Almost like she has like a blanket underneath her or something. <laughs> you know, I, I, I would probably have tried taking that left leg and trying to parallel the angle of the closer strut instead mm. of the further away strut. But I have a funny feeling it would then just become like she's trying to do the splits. It would be too much. Yeah. It would push the the push the Well, and this was much. one of the one of the last shots in the entire session and we were running out of light. Um the the skylight was dropping fast. Um so and it was dark compositionally. I really couldn't work it like I wanted to because it was just getting dark and I, I couldn't see. So yeah. you're supposed to say, we had to wait so long to get it to this dark. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this was exactly the lighting I, you were looking for. I actually like the, the sunset glow being nice and low like that because it ties into the airplane nicely at mm-hmm. with the yellows and then the oranges kind of feed in with her skin. And there's some orange underneath that foot that fits in nicely with the sky. Yeah. Yeah, actually, those are some vintage um, suitcases. Oh. That um, I didn't quite get in. I really wanted to use them because they were cool, um, other than just you know have her sitting on them. Oh, but you know, that. again, we ran out of time. I yeah, see I'm that she's sitting on them. I didn't even realize that. Those heels might not be practical. Oh, I think. Oh, no, right. yeah. <laughs> I think I'd walk around all night with those. Yeah, until you went on some <laughs> soft earth and just tick over backwards. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're awesome in that they are completely ridiculous. Oh yeah. <laughs> But nice use of the airplane. I actually I like that you didn't go with a super long lens. I kind of like the warping of the airplane with the the shorter lens. It looks like it's around sixty millimeters somewhere in that neighborhood. Yeah, it was a twenty four eighty five. So I'm somewhere in that range. I'm not exactly sure where it ended up. Yeah, the, there would be a really strong temptation to go longer and try to get that wing to look straight and then apply a bunch of lens correction. And I think it would be a terrible choice because she's got shape and curve to her calves. And I was just going to talk if, about her calves. Yeah, if you made the plane very rectilinear, it would suddenly become incomplimentary, if that makes sense. She has some very shapely legs. She does. I enjoy looking at them. They're Is she nice. local? No, she's out of Los Angeles. Um, trying to, I, I only worked Elena Williams, um, and she basically organized the shoot. Um, she got a hold of Todd, uh, worked through all the logistics, um, brought in a fashion designer, makeup artist, um, another male model that we shot on some of the other images. Um, yeah, it was great because, I mean, she worked through all of the logistics and pulled everybody up from Los Angeles to come out to Meadows Field, our airport. And, you know, Todd and I shot, shot, shot. Yeah, Very I, cool. I got to say, I love it when a model takes charge oh, of the yeah. shoot. Because so often, I mean, don't one of a photographer's skills is organizing and bringing together and running the team. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. it is a huge relief when a model shows up and goes, I got this concept. I got some people. Let's go do this. You hold the camera. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's well, such it, a load it, off. It frees up a whole bunch of, um, you know, lo- logistical issues that you don't have to deal with. Yeah. And, uh, and you can it's already those, covered. You can devote those neurons to maybe taking the picture. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> as we get older, you have less to work with. I have come to realize. <laughs> I need to set up some shoots sometime. Oh, this is a Roxanne image. I know. I really like that. I love the soft. I like the the softness of of the lens. I guess it. How is that a soft lens, or how does how would you describe that? I think that, that? it's post production softened. Okay, and then a little bit, and then yeah. the backlight has that effect on the mm-hmm. hair mm-hmm. Um, because the hair. If you look at hair uh, backlit microscopically, hair diffuses the light, and it they're like little lenses. Mm-hmm. So when you backlight hair, it does, it has generates that sort of glowy prettiness where it's bringing in light from all directions look at that pretty beauty mark she has i wonder if it's real (laughs) it's in it's real in the image it's real in the image and that's all that matters (laughs) 
little makeup. I had to check. Does Roxanne have a beauty mark? I should know that. I, I don't. I, yeah, I actually probably knew that. Yeah, you've already looked at my face way more. I was going to say I, I probably know where every freckle you got is at this point. Uh, likely so. Um, it's it's a classic image. I like the tonal quality. I like that. Uh, it does go true black in its shadows, but they're very sparing, and they mm-hmm. almost act like framing lines mm-hmm. like around under her the face. Neck and, and yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, it almost reminds me of Marilyn Monroe. Well, oh, it's we're going it, to go further down that road here. Oh, in a few yeah, minutes. yeah, it's uh, Marilyn's been a big theme, um, and this was uh, a tribute to Douglas Kirkland's White series. Oh, um, excellent. So. We we did a lot of research, a lot of you know background work, and um, chose the lighting, chose the pose, you know, to emulate uh, what had been done in the past. Mm-hmm. It's really and then, nicely done. Uh, it looks the, like uh, it's in your studio. I recognize yeah. some glass block. All right. Yep. Yep. I was actually and showing then, a picture of your studio to my wife, saying, "You see, I want to put this glass block in the bathroom." <laughs> <laughs> it's like you're not shooting people against it. Like, fine, I'll keep that in the backyard. <laughs> yeah, that was a recent addition to the studio. Uh, well, recent, like within the last eight years or so. Um, and it's it does some amazing things. The, the light that comes through it um, projects um, almost like underwater type uh, squiggle. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just, it's been a lot of fun to play with. It was a, it was a good addition. I very bet. very cool. I, I it's it's on my list when when the the new studio gets built someday <laughs> there will be a glass bl- I I don't know whether it will be a wall in the studio or whether I will make a roll around, you know, big metal oh, frame that's that a roll around cool. glass box. It seems like that would be a neat utility to be able to wheel in and shoot through. Absolutely. They're very heavy. Yes. Yeah, no. Oh, I, I have bet. engineer friends. It'll yeah. all work. Ooh, I love this pose. My goodness. The pose is superb. Um, This is is, uh, obviously inspired by the Black Tape Project, which any photographer worth their salt should be uh, Googling in about 30 seconds. Or less. Um, (laughs) Because it it is one of those things that is so, so obvious, and yet no one did it until (laughs) 10 years ago. Yeah, it's... This one's really, I really like the way the tape went just right over the, the naughty bits. And, yes. uh, and the way she's bent over like that, it's, it makes you look closer at the bottom part. <laughs> Where is that tape going? <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's going everywhere, I'm guessing. Um, familiar model. Yes, that's um, Jessica Franco. I thought it might be. Yeah. I've never worked with her, but I would really like to. She's she's very pretty. Very No, we'll have to we'll have to drag her along to the next uh, portfolio jam. Yeah. Definitely. Her shape is curvy, but not too curvy. I uh, it's it, I mean, obviously that's personal preference, but I find her to be a beautiful shape, beautiful girl. Mm-hmm. She seems to be able to strike a pose. Um impressive. I like the blue. Was yeah. that uh, just a gelled light? Uh, let's see. I'm trying to remember now. Um, I think that was a gray background with some gelled light. Uh, and I've modified, uh, I've got some old Normans that I've um, housed in uh, like a, um, what is it? Uh, strand color, color. It's an ellipsoidal. Uh, mm-hmm. focusing focusing light mm-hmm. and um, I've modified the uh, the light to fit inside of that housing it used to be just like a um, you know like a big tungsten light but uh, put a flash tube in there and uh, I'm able to you know freeze action with it who did the taping I did you did yeah and that's kind of like you know the uh, coming up with the pattern yes. so that it's you know interesting and then there's some funny things that tape does. Um, like if you stretch it too much, it gets all warbly looking. So you have to, you have to pull it out and let it re-stretch um, back to its normal shape and then apply it. Mm-hmm. And that and the is... The first, first few attempts were bad. Oh, no. <laughs> that is just traditional electrical tape. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which, which comes in many different colors if you go on Amazon.com. Absolutely, yeah. There, there's a lot of potential there. You talk about modifying lights. Um, I've got here a – this is one of the gems of eBay. It is a medium format zoom lens uh, for, a media, for obviously a large film camera. And unlike a lot of things, it has a huge aperture to put a strobe down the middle of. Oh, nice. And create very, very focused light. And because, and I'm sure this was a very bad day for its previous owner, it has a great big gash across the front of it. Oh. This doesn't oh. actually affect anything, but nobody's going to go shoot their medium format camera through this if they're serious. And the I got it for $59 on eBay. Wow. Nice. Yeah. And uh, new, that's that's a $2,500 lens. So eBay, bad, big, giant aperture lenses and your strobes. Very much fun. Yeah. Have you tried yeah. taking a magic eraser to that scrape? Uh, <laughs> it's like a cure-all. No, no. But, uh, but I will tell you, I've been doing some research in scratching lenses and repairing them. Mm-hmm. And... Um, the thing that will fix, uh, and I will insert a picture of the uh, of this scratch right here. Um, the thing that makes that go away the best, if you want to save a lens, is actually a nice fine sharpie marker to fill the crack with black, so it can't. Oh yeah. So that it can't uh, refract light anymore, and then go mm-hmm. in and polish off the black on the surface. Hmm. That'll be a future video. Uh, we're planning on doing some supplementary videos that go between the seasons. Sure. And some of them will be uh, sort of like little studio tips. Some of them will be I drop my lens tips. Um, and I we're going to wreck gonna do... some equipment. Yeah. Oh, no. So <laughs> I think we should. Uh, aren't we planning on doing a posing one, too? We will be doing some posing yeah. stuff. We are going to show just how far you can push your model before they freeze. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think. Oh, I didn't. I didn't here. agree to that. <laughs> <laughs> I think you should run me that, that, that fast me first. Well, oh, we'll, we'll find oh, some okay. other model. No, no, I'll we'll get a red it. shirt. I'll do it. <laughs> oh, I. Where did you find that sword? Oh well, <clears throat> I happen to have a whole bunch of swords. Um, it's kind of a long your, story. It's a very no, it's long not. story. Looking at it, it's about uh, eight years. <laughs> no. What's a do a katana. Okay. I was going to say, is uh, it a katana? It's a like a two-handed katana. Mm-hmm. And it's huge. It but actually it, looks it, like five feet long. <laughs> yeah. It is. It's yeah. it's ever bit as tall as she was. That is an impressive piece of metal. Oh, the model's nice, too. Yeah, she's yeah. incredibly yeah. Oh, by the muscular. Way, My she's goodness. She's a good choice because she looks like she could wield it. Oh, she yeah. Is oh, yeah. Very yeah. strong. She looks like she's trained. Still too. attractive. Still nicely shaped, but also looks like she could beat you up. You know, what's <laughs> kind of funny is that I did a pose for a university locally um, a couple of years back, and I posed with a uh, a road bike. Yeah. And it was for a team. And then I put it on my portfolio, and I had people, photographers, asking me if I wanted to go on a ride. <laughs> like, you know that my profession is to pretend like I do things. Yes, well... <laughs> I yeah. have never been on a road bike before. There, there is, um. <laughs> uh, you know, we just assume that being a model, you'll do almost anything. Yeah. Well, so. this is a prime example. I mean, is somebody go to her portfolio and say, hey, do you want to go on a sword fight? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I love the sort of, it's um, the best way to put it, they're very blocked up colors as far as there is a green and it is a defined thing that doesn't roam too much in the color palette. Mm-hmm. There is the sky blues in the back there mm-hmm. that that are nicely mirrored in the reflections at her feet. And man, that blue, that vibrant, and then the blue, almost. which is almost like taking that background and you just dialed it to eleven. Yeah. And then the yellow takes the colors of the greens, of course, speak to the yellows, and. They're very monolithic, which sometimes would be the death of a picture. Mm -hmm. And here it just works. It's crazy against her skin. That blue is just, it pops. like It makes her skin pop. Well, and her skin speaks to the color of the the handle Mm -hmm. nicely. And there's this nice vertical march from the handle to her skin to the, the ground. 
And the angles are perfect. Yeah, the, the colors and the angles. Oh, of course, yeah, I can yeah. almost not speak about how good the angles yeah. are as far as <laughs> the dress and, and the, the sword. sword. And then, yeah. Do you have a fan out there or is that natural? No, this was actually, this whole image was real um, fortuitous. It, it came about, um, she had a costume. It was a group shoot. Um, her, She put this turban on that was yellow and it happened to be the exact same hue as the uh the uh fringe on the sword and then the uh, the dress happened to be the same color as the graffiti that was on this park bench oh. and i just propped her up there and it happened sometimes you just get really really lucky Yes. Oh, that is the truth. Let I would me tell imagine you. so. You can't even tell that that's a park bench, nor that it has graffiti on it. That's amazing. Yeah, I thought it, I, well, honestly, I thought they were reflections, but I see now. Yeah, it was somebody, you know, spray painted on a park bench. And nice of them to I use your happened. color. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I Did you arrange that? <laughs> <laughs> He's out there with the costume, you yeah. know. The paint store yeah. going, I need a can of paint. Looks just this color uh -huh. here. <laughs> Does she have swimsuit bottoms on? I'm not sure what they are. It looks um, like there's a tie it looks on the like side. It. Yeah. It, yeah. It could be it is... a, a matching cover-up You're right. Could to be. go with it. Could be. Well, she is an awesome model. You know, the, the muscular girls are difficult to shoot because they bring a whole different feel, a whole different set of lines. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, by... Putting in something that is martial arts or uh, sort of very man oriented, mm -hmm. you are able to leverage that muscularness in a Absolutely. way that you otherwise couldn't. Yep. Um, a matter about of fact, the only direction I had to give her was, you know, how to rotate the sword so that it caught the sunlight and glowed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it needed it. Um, That's it's... talent. Then she knew how to she knew how to work her angles. Yeah. Well, I'll bet she I'll bet she competes. Just oh, as a I while, bet she okay. does. So she's probably done with a lot that kind of, of muscle tone. You're right. <laughs> if she doesn't, she needs to get out there and get that started. Mm -hmm. Nice image. Uh, another Marilyn. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so cute. I like that pose. <laughs> it is happy. It's pretty. She's got an amazing smile, mm -hmm. and it screams. You know, 1959, yep. 1964, somewhere in there. I love it it's right. because of the stripes and the high waisted shorts and just so cute. Yeah, hairstyle. So, how did this one come about? This was a promotion shoot for Atomic Kitten Salon, oh. and we had done a bunch of research looking at you know very iconic Marilyn images, and um, put the whole thing together. Um, they did hair and makeup, of course, and the costuming. Uh, we tried to keep with very uh, traditional, vintage-looking uh, wardrobe, and it was shot with a 85 millimeter 1.4. Tried to get that, you know, bokeh. I love that lens. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. So we did. We did several, um, like in one day uh, during this, you know, Maryland theme shoot. Um, this was one of the better ones. There's a couple others. I don't know if they were in the in the group that I sent to you or not. You, you sent a big enough group that I had to pare down, and it was yeah. killing me to go, oh, I just don't have space for this one. <laughs> yeah. It's so good. This is just so classic. I really like yeah, this. Yeah, I love it. Uh, I, I think the, the message for this interview is find a competitive salon. I agree. <laughs> I want to be the model for a salon. <laughs> <laughs> and I have I had to stick with the vintage theme because you're doing oh, it yes. so well. You know these yeah. shots of someone holding a camera or taking a picture they always crack me up, but they're always they're a great shot. They well obviously it speaks to the photographer because we love our cameras, right. mm -hmm. <laughs> and this is a particularly good camera. Yeah, um, that's my 1926 Leica C3. Oh, wow, it's a nice camera. Do you actually still use that? I haven't shot film in a really long time. I've, okay. I've gone all digital, but I used to shoot it a lot. Hmm. They are superb. The lenses just have, they, they, they're they somewhere along the assembly line. There's a station called Magic. Where yeah, <laughs> and they are so well designed and so precision made. They're just amazing works of art in themselves. 
I was reading the uh, origin story of Canon Camera, and it was Mr. Canon. I've forgotten his exact name. <clears throat> Got himself a Leica. I think it was a two or a three, and um, took it apart and said, "Wow, well, we can make this." <laughs> and so, if you look at the very early Canons, they look a whole lot like a three. Hmm. Um, so it's a classic image again. It's got that vintagey look to it, and it's black and white. Um, did you? Of course. Did you use a uh, either virtual or real colored filter to sort of alter that, or or? No, that's pretty much. That was. I'm trying to remember how far back that was shot. I think I shot that on. That was a Fuji S3 camera, and. Yeah, it was, you know, uh, I it think has... that was before before Photoshop had the um, um, the feature where when you turn a black and white, you're actually using the color channels to, mm -hmm. I, yeah, back I think when you I, had to do that all manually with yeah, layers. Right. And I think this might have been a remaster of that image, and I might have gone back and used the color channel information to to kick it up a notch. It, it looks like it has just like maybe a little orange filter over it or a slightly red filter. Hmm. Um, the way the, the skin tones are kind of flattened out just a little bit. It's, it's a nice emulation of an early black and white film. And I wonder I like what it. ethnicity she is. It's puzzling. she is, she, that's Saya Yabanda and she's a, a movie actress uh, down in Los Angeles, Hollywood. Oh. Uh, doing a lot of uh, indie films, and she is Persian. Oh, okay. There, there are a lot of very pretty Persian girls out there. there let me is. tell you. Unfortunately, I don't think they age very well. I wasn't going to be brave <laughs> enough to say it, but <laughs> they age beautifully, no, just not are, like everyone else. <laughs> they are beautiful up until a certain age. There's, I think, a lot of Indian. Um, Women are the same way. It's true. Well, there are some genetic sets like the French that just cheat. I don't know how they yeah, manage it. How do they look young their entire life? I don't know. It's, yeah, how they, do they, they do that? They stay attractive in a way that gets kind of confusing to a guy where you're like, oh, that 80-year-old woman's quite attractive. Well, what am I thinking? <laughs> <laughs> oh, they keep their youth. Oh, that's too funny. I hope I didn't. I hope I don't offend anyone by saying that. <laughs> We will offend people in this show. I think you're right. <laughs> if you're not willing to be occasionally offended, may I suggest the Disney Channel? Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait. No. They've done it, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, and no yeah. comedians. No. There's no comedians that will Definitely won't. not. <laughs> um, again, beautiful image. Uh, was this for her book? or? Yeah, this was... She was just getting started. This was way back, probably 2006 or so about 10 years ago and she'd seen my work really liked it came up from I think she was in Long Beach then and spent the weekend and we shot for like three days straight and shot a whole series of images mm -hmm. very cool very nice yeah and another beautiful uh, another vintage classic. beauty yeah now beautiful. this was shot um, on, on like a Fuji S2 and this was pre Photoshop um, color information, um, black and white treatment. So I, in the menu of the camera, was able to figure out how to make the sensor hyper blue sensitive. Oh, really? And what I was trying to do is emulate, um, well, what's it called? Uh, panchromatic film. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where it's, uh, you know, blue sensitive, like all the old Matthew Brady, um, yeah. And that's why in all the early film um, silent movies, all the actresses with blue eyes had white eyes. Oh. Well, man, did it work. For, for, for <laughs> being done with primitive, uh, by today's standards, primitive technology, right. Yeah, it's an extraordinary image. If, if you pulled this out and said this was done by, on a large format camera in 1932... You'd be like, man, that is a clean, clean vintage image. Yeah. <laughs> well, and she has that classic vintage look. She's a um, local pinup model, mm -hmm. and she just has that 1920s look. Yeah. It's amazing. This is one of my favorite images of all of them so far. 
Yeah. I know. It's, I, I think it's the hair piece. It's the angle that her head is, is tilted at. It's obviously, obviously the lighting. It's just beautiful. Where is that, that uh, head piece or hair Oh, piece that's um, a client uh, makes those. Uh, trashy glam jewelry. Oh, um, they're gorgeous. Yeah. It fits so well in this scenario. Trashy glam jewelry. We will uh, try to look that up and put a link in the show notes. No guarantees. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, it it is pretty slick. The whole thing is slick. I, I, I feel the need to experiment. <laughs> Which is, to be honest, exactly why we do this show. We want it's to pull true. up images and have people go, oh, I'm going to give that a try. I know. Right. The, problem. Except the problem is, oftentimes, <laughs> I'm the audience. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think the problem is we're the hosts and we're busy doing this instead yeah, of doing that. <laughs> if, oh, God, if I could just spend as much time uh, experimenting as I do being inspired. I know. Beautiful, beautiful image. Thank you. Ooh, such a beautiful art nude. It was. I like that hip shape. Yeah. Yeah, that's Heidi. Um, this was shot in the Kern Canyon. And, you know, we're just looking around for locations, rocks and everything and found that. And she just fit right in there. She I've looks like to, a goddess. I haven't been to Kern Canyon in years. It is uh, a relatively It's a magical place. Yeah. It's got a lot of really neat shape to it, a lot of neat erosion. Uh, the thing I want to point out that you've done here that is brilliant is dropping the knee off of the edge. Mm -hmm. Thank you. It it gave her, a, I, she might have a lovely posterior, but in this image, regardless, she, her, her buttock look really nice and curvy. Mm -hmm. It offsets, she's got a nice strong calf, which in somebody that was otherwise a little flat, that calf would be a problem. And it gives you license to bring that shoulder up very high because you've got all of these curves going mm -hmm. in somebody that uh, by the looks of her is not super curvaceous. No, she's very thin. Um, she is um, a ballerina, so oh, she's very sense. graceful with her poses. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I, I love working with her. She's just she, she poses so elegant. Well, you need to bring her on over. You need to come okay. for a beach shoot. <laughs> we will set something up. You know, we talk about hands often, but her hands are perfect. The way yes. she has them posed, they have the, the long side towards the camera. So right. you're not right. getting that thickness that you would otherwise. Yeah, and they look relaxed. Not necessarily completely natural, but not far from it. Mm -hmm. um, her yeah, top they don't hand look is synthetic. definitely... I think her top hand looks very natural. And as yeah, we if I said, had it to do over again, the other hand might have been a little flatter on the rock. Yeah. But, yeah. It looks like it should be that way. As it's we were saying thing. on our last podcast, uh, the under boob is the sexiest part. Agreed. Yeah, it <laughs> really <laughs> is. You're rocking that one for sure. It, it is done. And again, a black and white in color. This would not be as powerful an image by a long shot. No, it didn't work in color. I, I love the textures that come out in black and white, especially on granite. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely true. This is also one of those examples where you definitely want a towel because I bet oh, she yeah. is sandy and dusty and <laughs> dirty. It's what we go through. Yeah. It's what we go through. Well, I, I, I bought myself a travel trailer because of things like this. I think it's great. Yeah. Although travel trailers, they can't get into the, you know, hiking back up into the well, craziness. Still, at the end of the day, you can it's get cleaned really off. It's really nice. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> we need to put that to use. Yes. All right. I, I love this image, but I have to ask about that background. How did that happen? Okay. That is the light that comes through my glass brick window. Oh. So. Yeah, right around 2.30 in the afternoon, especially uh, in the wintertime when the uh, sun's further down in the, um, in the sky, it shoots right into the studio and makes that pattern on the wall. That's pretty great. And I'm willing to bet that if you got outside with a nice big fat strobe, you'd get oh, crazy, yeah. crazy stuff. That, and I've um, propped a, uh, a mirror onto a stand where I can focus the light and re-aim the, uh, the sunlight through the window and change its angle. Hmm. Very nice. And what is she holding? Uh, it's just some sheer material. Uh, oh. It's got like a little bit of a sheen to it. Yeah, the way her 
the under uh, the arm that's underneath the fabric is angled. It kind of looks like she's holding a big something. I thought it might have been a wedding dress. Like yeah, up over maybe the like shoulder. a lot of fabric or something. Yeah. No, yeah, it's just a, a a bolt of fabric. You know, I'll go to thrift stores and mm-hmm. uh, you know fabric stores and get remnants and you know oh, this looks interesting and let's give that a try. So I, yeah, I like that the the light is pushed in around her face. I think that leg would have been way too strong if there was more illumination down mm-hmm. lower. Right, right. Um, I like her hair. She's pretty. It's a very pleasant image. Yeah, it's very neat. It's different. And that Thanks. light is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, oh, back to something morbid. a little creepy. Talk about morbid. Yeah, well, you know, the shock value is there, and that's, that's what we were going for. Yes, You're it like, is. are like, uh, that looks like a nice place for a grave. Get me a shovel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, that was a um, that was way back, and that's shot on um, Kodak twenty four seventy five recording film. Oh, excellent! Yeah, ISO one thousand, um, and then yeah, it's that's got like a forensic film for the most part. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it was a documentation film. It just had this incredible grain to it. I used to love shooting that, but this was for um, a gothic magazine. And we were doing light painting uh, in a graveyard, and I happened to notice this big board on the ground, and I lifted it up, and it's like, oh, <laughs> it's empty. It's a big hole in the ground. I was going to so say, this how do you know someone? Grave. I was going to say, so this is the real deal. I thought maybe you got yeah. in the backyard with a shovel. And no, made it. no, no, Look no. Look how perfect those corners much are. <laughs> I mean, that's got to be machine done, but that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. the... Um, so you've answered the question I really put this in is I was looking at them like, how did this thing get exposed? Because I couldn't see where the lights were coming from. And yet they right. they make the edges glow beautifully. That yeah, is just traced sick. right along the edge of the opening with uh, just a mag light. And yeah. OK, oh, so it makes. Sorry, that model is so brave. Well, she made me go down first. Oh, she did? Okay. (laughs) Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's like, I'm not going down there. It's like, you got to go down there first. It's like, well, it's just a hole in the ground. It's pretty creepy, but it's safe. A hole with neighbors. (laughs) Oh, my goodness. Exactly. A hole with neighbors. And it's meant for someone tomorrow. Yeah. Oh, yeah, man. That's that's the thing I've always wondered about. It's like, oh, who actually ended up getting buried there? Well, hopefully it was <laughs> a, a, a male ghost who's like, this is a sweet spot. Have you seen yeah. the picture? <laughs> <laughs> He's renting it out by the hour now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's great. I love it. Uh, I wonder if I would do it. I think I oh, probably yes, you would. would. I would, but it's still creepy. <laughs> it's still creepy, but it has such, you know, impact that you know it was well worth doing yeah you're right i uh in in my other career i do some hospital work and i for years was working at a very old hospital and our office was in the old morgue oh and i look back at the the you know we're talking 1930s autopsy tables and and yeah lockers and things and i'm like I should have shot in there when when nobody was looking. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. well. I mean, it's it's hard hindsight. to find those kind of props. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you mean remember the bathtub shot with there was like fifty bathtubs? And they were yes. all the freestanding ones. That's one of those ones where I was like, how yeah. do you find like a sh- an, a location like that? <laughs> you just got to keep your eyes open, and when you see it. You, you have to go ask because and you have to. Yeah, you have to. You can't get believe that's good. You would be shocked at, if you walk up and you're like, "Wow, that uh, eighty thousand dollar combine you have there. Do you mind if I put somebody on it and take a picture?" A lot of people will that you would never think. We'll go. Well, heck yeah, I'm, you know. <laughs> yeah, I always wanted to have a cute girl on my combine. Well, a lot of that too, like the cars. Yeah. All these people with their fancy cars, and they let us get up on the hoods. <laughs> Not, oh, on, well. not on my car. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah I'm yeah, always scared to death that a model's going to put their high heels through somebody's car. Yeah, it's like, or, or put a big, big yeah. shallow dent on a classic yeah. hood. That's, oh, man. Well, that's, imagine if you were the one climbing up on it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and and you're tall. Yeah. I mean, you're you're not a featherweight. Nope. And Wait, I'm not? <laughs> it's, ooh. Oh. Uh, I mean, compared to really light feathers. Yeah. <laughs> 
um, uh, it's okay. It's funny. I, uh, uh, some of the models that we know, I mean, they must weigh 80 pounds soaking wet. And I'm yeah. willing to put them in a lot of places. I'm not willing to put a, a full-size person. Oh, full-sized. Yes. That's As always nice. As opposed to sort of the, <laughs> the uh, snack size. I'm going to go people. cry now. <laughs> oh, that sounds so wrong. Um, ah, just teasing. It's funny. And, uh, you know, a lot, th- this is a great image, but in some ways I don't want to talk to you about the image. I want to talk to you about how you go about uh, going to a model and saying, I want to do this kind of s and kind of ropey thing. <laughs> what? I've well, had people it, approach me about it. <laughs> it's, um, I'm not shocked. I don't say yes, though. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you have certain models that you work with, and you know that they're pretty much up for anything. And Kim's perfect that way. She's relaxed, you know, she's trusting, you know, and there's nothing, you know, she knows that nothing's going to happen. Um, and this Kinbuku Shibari um, is a very ancient Japanese tradition, and it's very stylized and it's really cool. Um, and it's a theme that I've, I've gone back to a few times and I'm, I'm learning, uh, I'm a novice (laughs) rope, not tire. Mm -hmm. So I literally have to, um, pull out a tutorial book on how to tie these knots. I've got a, a a rope master that I'm working with now, and we're going to do some more, uh, stylized, uh, knot tying and, and, uh, shibari techniques that I can't do but this was one of the first uh attempts at it Hmm. it's pretty remarkable i as far as i mean if you look at the complexity you start counting knots it's a lot of knots which means that this didn't just pop on in five minutes oh no yeah it takes a while to to put this all together and then to find um a pose that it works with where you've got enough you know uh slack in the rope to get her to move into a certain direction. Um, yeah, well, it takes a little, little time. And it, if you're not careful, this can look like uh, sort of the... Uh, uh, it can get a little more S&M than it needs to be. You know, it, it can ruin the mood of the picture. You want it to look like it's an element of play or tradition instead of a... Uh, Domination. A torture. Domination. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And and I think and you've you've yeah. met that balance nicely. That's why know. I always say no, because I feel that there will that there will be too it's touch it's such a, a difficult line to walk. Yeah. And unless I know the photographer very well, um mm-hmm. I don't want to walk that line. <laughs> There is a a photographer that I'm still tracking down for the podcast that his entire portfolio is this kind of work, and it's some of the most amazing things you've ever seen. Um, But because I haven't caught him just yet, I'm not going to to share that. Yeah. (laughs) We'll get there eventually. Keep following um, us. Again, it's an art. It's, It's definitely a thing. And I like the image. The tonal qualities are great. Uh, the ropes generate all of these lines that you can either use or will use you as far as where you're going to send somebody's eye. Yeah, compositionally, that's what really drove me towards this uh, particular genre is the texture in the rope, um, the detail in the knots. It's got a lot of potential, and I've just barely scratched the surface. Yeah. Yeah, I've, uh, I have wondered whether you could... Uh, whether you could re- take one of these these rope arrangements and sort of uh, sew the knots in so they don't come off and then put in links on the back of the model hmm. so that it could be removed and put back on again for location work. Yeah, that's true. Um, because I see some sort of mixing with nature being a cool thing and yet very hard to go out in the middle of, uh, you know, Scotts Valley or something and... And go, okay, we're going to spend four hours getting some knots on here. Yeah. (laughs) Well, I've seen uh, artists do that. Um, They'll go on location, find an interesting tree to suspend somebody from, and work it into a um, uh, a landscape composition as well. Yeah. So there's people out there doing it. Yeah. Uh, This is where you, let's see, you use the trailer, 
and then it, <laughs> you, you use sort of the uh, the 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 oh, what's what's the classic uh, thing where you you see somebody being you know tied to a stick and being carried by a couple of guys. <laughs> <laughs> There's probably a picture there, too. Probably. Yes. Yeah, I think so. But it's a nice <laughs> image. I like it. The knots are interesting. Yeah. I think you have hit the balance where this is still sexy. It's not... It doesn't speak uh, uh, to be unpleasant for the model. It just... It looks like somebody's uh, having a good time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Very. Well, it was an interesting photo to end with as well. Yes, well... <laughs> Well, it did have her posterior. It right did there. have her posterior. Did we and talk I know about you, that being the like finishing a, shot a lot you of times? like a good butt. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, your career is obviously well established. You're doing beautiful work. Uh, is this where you want it to be, or are you going to be taking it on up the road? Oh, it's always going to evolve. I mean, I, I always find new things to try out and uh, different genres to explore. Um, I don't stick with any any particular subject very long. I'll, I'll revisit them occasionally if I like it, but no, I'm always trying different things. Do you do any workshops? You know, I've thought about it, and I've just never really put it together. I need to develop a curriculum, and um, but there's a lot of different things that go into creating imaging, um, just, you know, camera techniques, lighting techniques. But one of the ones that, you know, uh, grip gear, how to put things together, uh, how to build um, sets, you know, there's just all kinds of things to do. Well, I think uh, I think you're there. I think there are probably plenty of people that if you said, you know, I'm going to do a one day on how to do this, mm -hmm. I think you've got takers. <laughs> so if you have time yeah. you should work on that <laughs> yeah i really should and it's just one of those things where you know you got to find the time to develop the curriculum and figure out how to really teach the subject you know it's one thing to here here's a shot i need this done and i'll do it and then it's another thing to try and explain why you know you chose the things that you did to you know achieve that goal well, you let us know when you're ready to do that because <laughs> we will be showing up and we'll ha be happy to promote you. Okay. Definitely. Well, where can we find your work? Where's the best place for everyone to look? The best place to go would be artofericjames.com. Okay. And then from there, um, I've got links out to all the various social media sites. I'm you know, on Instagram. I'm on 500px. I'm on you name it. I'm there. So... There's links from, from that site that's kind of like the you know master go-to site and then whatever you're interested in because I do a lot of you know commercial work as well. I, you know, I do food photography and I do product illustration and yeah, whatever you're looking for. I do a lot of aviation work. So yeah, it's all, all there. Well, we really appreciate having you as a guest. Definitely. And thanks again to our sponsors, guests, and This Week in Photo for making this podcast possible. Don't forget to subscribe on YouTube, iTunes, or check out our unedited episodes at thisweekinphoto.com. We'll see you next time on Twip Glam. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. <laughs>